Okay, uh, hi everybody and welcome to another edition of uh, Reptile Ventures. So for the last uh, little while we've focused uh, quite a bit on ball pythons. So I thought for today we would do something totally different and uh, talk about Argentine boas. They're actually uh, one of my favorite boas. They're really, they're just a cool big hardy boa. And um, I've got them together right now for, for breeding. And um, so I'm going to get the girl out. I don't normally ever take them out of the cage, so I'm not sure how well it's going to go. The only time I ever open the cage is to feed them pretty much. So, um, anyways. Okay, uh, well, there's Seymour. Right? I'm a little more worried about him than her. Okay. Okay, come on. Wow, she's big. Yeah, she's a good size. Okay, you get back. Okay, so yeah, um, this is an Argentine female that I've had for, uh, oh, how old is this female? I don't know. She's probably a good eight years old. Ten, oh, actually, no, I think she's older than that. She's probably close to ten years old. Um, I've consistently bred Argentines over the last few years. They're actually one of the, uh, I think they're one of the easier boas to breed. Um, they always seem to have good litters. Um, I just kind of put the males together with the females right around this time of year and always seem to get babies in the springtime. Um, so they're really pretty easy to deal with. Um, <laughs> um, so Argentines, they were first uh, imported into the United States back in 1987. That was before they were put on the CITES Appendix 1. Uh, right now, they're, well, they are on, on Appendix 1, so they're virtually impossible to uh, import or export. Um, so what we have in Canada is pretty much it. I'm not going to see any new blood coming in. Um, there's, a, there's only a couple of sort of morphs of these. There's a T-positive albino, which I would love to get, but again, you can't, uh, you can't legally import them. There's also a motley version of these, which again I would love, but can't get it. Um, let's see if I can get her settled down here a little bit. Okay, so anyway, um, I've got her under control here a little better. I never, I never handle these things. <laughs> They're not used to being handled. She's actually behaving herself not too bad. But uh, the cool thing about these guys is they're the, um, well obviously they come from Argentina. But they're, they're one of the most southerly boa constrictor species. Um, if you kind of reverse their most southerly range into the northern hemisphere, these things would be uh, occurring like on the between the Oregon and California uh, borders. So it's kind of amazing to think that you know a boa like this could be living that far north. <laughs> it's just uh, just kind of mind-boggling but anyways they are a really they're a hardy boa they're very cold tolerant but uh, I don't do anything really different for breeding these guys I mean um, they don't I don't cool them or anything like that their light goes off in the cage at night and um, you know it's just the ambient air temperature in the building here and that's it um, so yeah they probably get a daytime high on their hot spot of probably about 90 degrees and then the light goes off so they're down to maybe upper 70s low 80s at night and uh, that's it I just keep the females well fed and like I said put them put the males in in December and we'll have babies in the springtime so anyways that's it I'm gonna put her back <laughs> is she heavy yeah she's quite heavy yeah very squirmy she says, get me back to my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So I guess we'll just answer some questions from last time. Jackie Page. Hi, Henry. Do you pull your males from the breeding program when they stop eating, or do you weigh them regularly and pull them out if they lose a certain amount of weight, say 10 to 20%. Thanks, Jack. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, 
I do keep an eye on the males, um, especially the ones that are, you know, smaller and younger and stop feeding. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I will pull them away from the breeding if, if they start getting real skinny. And actually, I just had that happen um, recently with a orange dream yellow belly male. Uh, he was only interested in breeding and just lost a ton of weight and had to completely isolate him and finally started feeding again. So, Okay, Mr. 87 Jack, Cracker Jack. Henry, my question is, can I come live with you and your wife? <laughs> Laugh out loud. Great video, brother. One of my favorite yeah, YouTubers well, we just, to watch. We just got, Best of luck to your buddy. <laughs> we just got one, got rid of one kid, so... Uh. Oh, but uh, I understand she's coming so no. back. <laughs> yeah, that could be now, yeah. Okay, Reynolds Reptiles. Great video, guys. I heard it's hard to hard for breeders to get new genes, get genes, new genes imported into Canada. Are you starting to see more genetics in Canada? If so, how do you think they are getting into the country? And what genes are currently missing from Canada that are already in the States? Mm, I don't oh, think there's really anything no. missing. Um, it's, it's a fairly easy process importing snakes into Canada. I mean, uh, anybody can import ball pythons into Canada. And there's, uh, I don't know, can't think of really any more that aren't here. Some, you know. Yeah, boo? Well, I'm sure somebody has bamboo, exactly. but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's not the, the volume that there is in the U.S., but uh, there's certainly a lot of morphs up here, definitely, yeah. And that's the last question. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Just a quick little video for today, and uh, so thanks for watching, and again, if you have questions, leave them in the comment area, and subscribe to the videos. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you later.